What's up guys, Chigs there from Chigs Tech Reviews. So the Apple Mac Mini with the M2 chip has just arrived. I li I'm really excited as I finally decided to upgrade from my 2018 Mac Mini, which I've been using for all my video editing and content creation for the past few years. Box inside a box, let's keep going. Wow. Brand spanking new Mac Mini, guys. Even though the design hasn't changed much over the years, it's still exciting to open a new one. Okay, just gonna place this to the side for now. Let's see what else we get in the box. So usual, Apple paperwork and Apple sticker and a power cable. That is pretty much all you get in the box. So as expected, all metal design, um, Apple logo on top, at the bottom it says Mac Mini and it doesn't look like you can twist to gain access to the internals. Now let's have a look at the ports. We've got power socket, gigabit LAN, two Thunderbolt ports, HDMI out, and we've got two USB 3 ports and a headphone jack just underneath. And that is pretty much all your ports. Now I'm going to quickly run through the specs. Now this new Mac Mini is powered by Apple's M2 5 nanometer octa-core processor clocked at 3.5 gigahertz. For graphics, we have a 10 core GPU, which we are gonna be putting to the test later on in this video. Now this model has eight gigs of RAM and that is DDR5 RAM. And I opted for the 512 gigabyte SSD storage. And I will tell you why a little bit later in the video. Now this also has Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, Gigabit LAN. It's running the latest version of Mac OS. You've got two Thunderbolt 4s. You've got two USB A's. This supports dual display. So up to 6K via Type-C or 4K60 via the HDMI port. Now Mac Mini also supports HDR10, HLG, and you have Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos support. And you guys know we're gonna have to test all of that out. Now I do wanna do a quick side-by-side -side comparison with the Mac Mini 2018. So here they are side-by-side. -side. You can see they are exactly the same size. So no difference in the size and feel between these two. And the only physical difference with the ports, you've got two extra Thunderbolt 4 ports in the 2018 Mac Mini. So yeah, we lose two ports, but specs wise, Apple M2 octa-core is gonna be much more powerful than the Intel i5. The graphics performance is gonna be a lot better. I've actually gone for the faster 512 gigabyte SSD. Now the base model of the Mac Mini has 256 gigabytes. This 2018 model is the base model, 256 gigabytes. Now throughout the years of using the Mac Mini, it started off okay. The more intensive tasks I undertook with the 2018 model, I would find quite a bit of slowdown. And that is due to the slow 256 gigabyte storage that you have in the base model. So this time around for the 2023 upgrade M2 model, I went straight for the 512 gigabyte SSD. We will be testing out the internal storage speeds, but as I understand, um, it's a much faster storage being used in the 512. And in return, you will get a much better overall performance, especially when you're multitasking or undertaking in graphic intensive tasks like video editing, graphic design. So um, if you are considering a Mac mini, even if you go for the previous M1 version of the Mac mini, make sure you go for the 512 gigabyte storage totally avoid the slow 256 gig storage. So yeah, finally decided to upgrade my 2018 model. It's getting too slow for me, especially when editing 4K video. Now quickly go over the pricing. Now the base model is only 649 for the 8 plus 256 gigabyte version, which is 100 pounds cheaper than the previous M1 Mac mini base model. Now I've actually gone for the 512 gigabyte version for 849, so 200 pounds more, but it uses that faster SSD storage and it does make a huge difference, especially for content creators and performance users. Now here's another tip for you guys. Um, I didn't actually buy this from Apple as I always experience quite a slow delivery service from Apple. So I actually bought this from John Lewis and the benefit of buying from John Lewis, and no, this is not a sponsored video. Um, I bought this with my own hard-earned cash. The reason why I choose John Lewis over Apple for my Apple products is because you get a two-year warranty as standard. And also, I bought this yesterday and it arrived today in the morning. So the delivery service was impressive. Now, the only thing about John Lewis is you can't personalize anything. If you wanna add specific RAM or if you wanna add some software, etc., you have to buy directly with Apple. I don't have that issue. I'm totally fine with 8 plus 512. 
Now, me personally, I do prefer using the Mac Mini for all my content creation, social media, and all other works that I do. I also have a MacBook Pro, and this is the 2017 version. It's still going strong, and I travel with this one. But most of my work gets done on the Mac Mini. And why do I like Mac Mini so much? Well, it's versatility, it's powerful, it's compact in size. It can be connected to any large display via HDMI or even Thunderbolt. And it's a lot cheaper than other Macs out there. So now I'm gonna get this all set up and we're gonna run a number of tests, including system, benchmarks, and even gaming. And I might even squeeze in some emulation to test that graphics chip. I'll be right back. Okay, starting off with the boot up speed test, I'll start the timer as soon as I hear the Mac Mini boot up. There. As soon as we see the login screen, I'm going to hit pause. Pause. Okay, I'm going to type in the password. Now, as soon as I hit enter, I'm going to continue the timer. So here we go. Enter. All right, 20 seconds, guys. So it took 20 seconds to fully load to the Mac OS desktop. And in case you're wondering, we are connected to a 4K monitor via Type-C cable. Now, quick look at the system information. You can see it says Mac Mini 2023. The chip is Apple M2. It says eight gigs of RAM. So we've got 512 gigs of internal storage and only 28 gigs have been used so far with 494 gigabytes usable. And under system information, you can see it's eight gigs of LP DDR5 RAM. And for those who are interested, here is some detailed information on the SSD. You can see the capacity at the top and all the other details available. Okay, we're gonna start the performance test. The first test I wanna run is 4K video from a USB drive, and I've just connected up my 64 gig SanDisk USB drive, and we are doing this with the VLC media player, which I did download through the official VLC website. So that's high bitrate, 4K Jellyfish demo, 160 megabits per second, and you can see the video is playing back super smooth. And the media player that I'm using is VLC player, which I downloaded from the web browser. Let's close this and open up the next one. It's 180 megabits per second. And I've got no doubt, as you can see, it's playing back super smooth. Okay, the real test, 400 megabits per second. And I'm also fairly confident that it's gonna manage this as well. And you can see flawless playback of high bitrate jellyfish demo. And this one is 400 megabits per second. Awesome stuff. Now we're gonna play some 4K60 with HDR. All right, next clip is 4K60 with HDR10. Let's see how it plays back. So you can play back pretty much any video format you like. I did not even have to download any codecs. I'm playing multiple video formats, MKV, TS, MP4, even AV1, everything working fine. All I did is download the VLC media player, which is completely free from the VLC website through the web browser. So next up, YouTube test, and we're gonna start off with the Costa Rica demo. And you can see maximum streaming 4K60 with HDR. So let's see how it plays. Okay, so I've connected the Mac Mini to my 75 inch LG television. And you can see here LG TV SSCR2. And you can see refresh rate 120 hertz with high dynamic range on. And Netflix does support 4K60 with Dolby Vision. President of Hawkins 
An Amazon Prime Video also supports 4K HDR. Right, you are all set. And Disney Plus also supports 4K streaming. Now I've just installed Steam and we're going to test out some gaming to test that 10 core GPU. So the next game we're going to play is CSGO which I downloaded through Steam and you can see all the graphics have been set to high. Now if you really want to test the graphics of a computer, probably one of the best ways has to be PS3 emulation. You do need quite a powerful graphics chip to be able to play PS3 games. Resolution is 720p PS3 native, Vulkan backend. We've got the shader quality slightly set to low and as you can see we're achieving around 30 frames per second. Um, I'm actually quite impressed that the Mac Mini was able to play the game. Um, I wouldn't say it's the smoothest gameplay. All right, time for some PS2 emulation with PCSX2. And we have the resolution set at 6X native Vulkan backend. We're achieving around 59 to 60 frames per second and the game is running at 100% speed. So really handling PS2 emulation very well. So next game we're playing is GTA Liberty City Stories. This is also running at 6X resolution and you can see we're achieving around 49 to 50 frames per second you, and you can see the game is running at 100% and the game looks and plays great. So it looks like the graphics performance is pretty good um, for PS2 emulation. Alright next game we're playing is Tatsunoko versus Capcom using the Dolphin emulator. Resolution is set to 7x native Vulkan backend and you can see the game is running at 59 frames per second 100% speed. All right, time for some GameCube emulation. We're playing Def Jam Fight for New York. Resolution is set to 4X native. We're using the Vulkan backend and you can see the game is running at around 59 frames per second and at 100% speed. So just finishing off with some Dreamcast using Redream and we're playing Power Smash 2 at the native Dreamcast resolution and you can see it's playing fine at 60 FPS. No problems here at all. And here are the results for the Blackmagic internal disk speed test. You can see we've achieved write speeds of just over 3100 megabytes per second and read speeds of 2850 megabytes per second. And here's a quick comparison with the 2018 model and you can see that in every subcategory on the far right the 2023 512 model achieves more than double the results in every category. And I'm just running a quick Wi-Fi speed test. Download speeds 62 megabits per second and upload speeds of 13 megabits per second. These are typically the top speeds we achieve in our office. OK, so that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Cinebench single core score of 1637. So looking at the graph, you can see we achieved a better single core score than some 11th gen Core i7s. And the multi-core score for Cinebench is 8702. And in Geekbench, we achieved single core score of 1959 and multi core score of 9017. So let's see how that compares with the others. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2023. And considering Mac Mini is a mini PC, it's getting included on this chart. And the chart ranking is based on benchmark scores. So if we compare the Geekbench results and based on what this Mac Mini could do in the performance and gaming tests, the new M2 Mac Mini earns itself position 4 on this chart. Now that should give you guys an idea of what sort of performance to expect from the Mac Mini. Definitely surprised by these results. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chigstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the new Mac Mini M2 model. So here are my thoughts starting off with the caveats. Now Mac Mini is unchanged in design. It's been exactly the same for the last few years. The RAM and storage are soldered. 
and not upgradable. So for the best performance, I would recommend the 512 version minimum. Now it's a shame that we only have two Type-C ports in the new 2023 model. No accessories are ever included with the Mac Mini, although it would be nice. Now obviously this is not sold as a gaming machine and the best you can do on it is PS2 emulation. It struggles with PS3 emulation and plays older Steam PC titles. So you would not buy a Mac Mini for gaming. Now onto the positives. This will be an excellent workhorse computer for creators, designers, and other professions that require that performance to undertake heavy tasks. The Mac Mini is great for multitasking and it's ideal for 4K video editing. Apple Silicon has come a long way, so very good overall system performance. Now, there is no doubt you can buy a cheaper and more powerful mini PC running Windows 11. But if you're already on Apple's ecosystem and you like working on Macs, it's going to be quite difficult to downgrade to Windows 11. Now, I know this comment is going to be subjective, but trust me, once you start using Mac, Windows is always going to feel like a downgrade. This is the honest truth. You can ask any Mac user out there. Now, I personally find when I'm working on Mac, my productivity goes up. And I also love how secure it feels when compared to Windows. I know that's also debatable, but this is just my experience I'm sharing with you guys after using Mac computers for the last five years. So that concludes my video on the Mac Mini 2023. I hope you found this one useful. Are you going to be getting a Mac Mini for yourself or have you bought one already? Let us know your thoughts. Like and sub for more innovative cool tech videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.